how this first game plays out. All right, both of them playing these warrior melee cleaves. Well, uh, KFC even coming out from Give It and the warrior DH Restoration Shaman coming out from a mad dog so it's gonna be very interesting to see how this plays out how what do you think about this dilly uh, i'm actually super surprised to see them go for the dh warrior wrestler shaman i mean i know that they've been practicing that a little bit but i would have expected they they would have gone with you know their bread and butter going for the red hunter um we have seen oxygen playing that wrestler, Sham wrestler shaman a lot and we've seen them practicing that red paladin a lot but I, I think the demon hunter warrior it's not a bad matchup we already just seen this matchup play with our last series and, and maybe that's what oxygen and fresh and yas they realize like well maybe if we play this matchup similar to them we can do well but curious thing about their comp choices or their talent choices is Oxygen isn't playing with that permanent spirit link and they're actually going for Oxygen playing that trinket instead of that adaptation. So I, I kind of like the little bit difference in that playstyle here. Yeah, a bit of a difference. That triple adaptation was very interesting last time around and now Oxygen put in that full trap right now. They have the beast route if needed. Looks like they're not gonna pop that trigger just yet. Just pressuring Yosuke, kind of mirroring exactly what happened in that last series. Like I said, tunneling down each other's warriors, playing this game on mana. But it looks like the mana right now is good for goals. And there's the Beast Sharaf being popped onto Yosuke. A lot of pressure coming in, in his way. Listora actually taking some damage as well. And the Disarm comes out. And very interesting honor talent choices from them as well. Playing that Disarm just to try and survive and maybe outlive their opponents. Right, so potentially he, he might have been giving up the Storm of Destruction instead of um, doing that. Maybe because they want to go for that single target. Maybe they're trying to just pressure the Hunter. I, I don't know if it's necessarily the best strategy. But we can see that Lissora does have no uh, Glider's Medallion available. So they have that the potential. With Demon Hunter Warrior, you can burst down a target really quickly. So if they actually set it up, he has no Trinket, they, they could absolutely kill him as long as they have no Iron Bark available, even with him still having the aspect of the turtle and his acceleration. I've had it happen to myself, and I'm sure you've killed Hunters the same exact way. Exactly, but Gorsling now on that Restoration Druid as well. It's going to be able to counter those Wall Breakers with that Iron Bark, and it's going to be interesting to see him on this Druid. We know he's been good on the Shaman and the Paladin, and right now he's keeping up well with his mana on that Restoration Druid. Has the Iron Bark and the Incarnation ready for the high pressure damage damage against Mad Dog, and right now he's winning that mana war against Oxygen, so it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Full trap on Oxygen, it gets that reverse magic once again coming out from Fresh. Right, I actually like Oxygen's play here. His mana management is actually excellent in this game, and, and it's funny to see that we just seen this last matchup play, and Oxygen, even without the Spirit Link talent, he's actually had to use so much of his mana pool now. He has been going for how uh, Gossing was doing um, when we saw Solak playing that same matchup. So I, I actually like their uh, KFC play, and we, we could actually kind of see a little bit where the other Korean teams were favoring them, and, and I could absolutely see that. It seems like Gossing is a lot more comfortable on that Restoration Druid than we saw Solak being. Indeed, Oxygen trying to pre-tremor now, but he gets put into a trap. If they can follow up with a fear, it's going to be Ooh, dead. Tremor. So he does end up breaking Yosuke. He's really low on HP. He uses it to leap over onto Ghosting. Put him in a full fear. Trinket Iron Bark comes out from Ghosting as well to just counteract some pressure. But that means that Yosuke is going to have a wall breaker coming up soon without any Iron Bark. Right, and now they have that window to actually train them. Now they go for the Storm onto Lee Sora. He does have his Glad Ears Medallion on, trying to get that extra pressure onto him. They use that Disarm on him with that Fell Eruption CC being used on a Gossing and getting a little bit of that swap damage over there from Fresh, actually opting in to use the Rain from above, trying to get that, that damage as he Fell lances his target, trying to get that extra little bit of pressure where they can't attack him. Yeah, it's very interesting. He actually used it for pressure, and, you know, if Gibbick can see that, they might turn their backs on him, but it looks like Yosuke is actually taking quite a lot of damage. He has to use that Rally and Cry to survive. He doesn't want to use that Die by the Sword yet. That's the Warrior's main defensive cooldown, so he really wants to hold on to that. It looks like he's trying to pressure the other Warrior as well, and the manners are actually quite tight now. Even though, like we said, Gorsling had that advantage at the beginning, it's slowly becoming more even now. Right, and the only thing to worry about, though, with that is while he does have that little bit of the even moment, remember, we have that Innervate coming in about 20 seconds, so that's the window where he's going to be able to be uh, really mana efficient, be a little bit safe, as long as he has the solid one. Now, if he does it at the wrong time, Oxygen could pun punish him, or even Fresh, he could get the RNG uh, dispatch spell on it just with the Demon Hunters spell, which they actually gained in Battle for Azeroth, so it could be a, a wise choice for them. And I actually like what you mentioned earlier with uh, Yas actually opting in to hold on to the Die by the Sword. I think sometimes Warriors shove that too early, and they hold the Rallying Cry for the last minute, but I actually think that in this kind of situation, I think that was the right choice. Yeah, although Die by the Sword does come out now, but against the Basilisk, I think that was the wise move, really, just trying to survive that Stormbolt onto Oxygen as well. It looks like Mad Dog are actually the ones taking quite some pressure. Like I say, the mana advantage going to Gorsing right now, give it they're just a slightly ahead with that, and also slightly ahead with defensive cooldowns as well. So Mad Dog really need to make something happen, and they're doing it now. A full fear on the Gorsing, they need to get the pressure pumping right now. Dog going about half HP, another stun onto Gorsen, but he's in that incarnation and it looks like he'll just be able to heal this 
fine. Lee getting a bit low as well. Jumps out of the way, doing his best to kite them as well. Yeah, and you know what? I actually noticed with the Tree of Life, they actually use that so they can combo it with the Innervate, and at that moment, they actually will not use any of their mana, and, and that's how Gosling was able to actually regen some mana. I, I, I think that's a pretty good strategy, whereas, you know, throughout the game, it's not as mana efficient. I, I've seen both of the, the Korean teams, they actually liked using those together, and, and I actually can see why. I think it's a pretty good strategy. You get to spam those healing touches instantly when you are in that Tree of Life form, um, but now we see so much pressure coming onto Yasuo, who has no Rallying Cry, and Oxygen's mana is very low. He has no Trinket available for him, so if he is caught in that full CC, Fresh has no uh, adaptation, and, and we can see the Spiral Link is actually forced, because if he held on to it, it's going to be too late for his team, and they're just in this position where they're just falling further and further behind. They had the Storm Will coming out with a full trap, and there is no break for that Yask is going to be the one who's being pressured here. He's trying to get that counter pressure onto Lisor, who does use that Gladder's Medallion. They have to find this window where they can somehow force Iron Bark and burst him down, but it just seems like it's so hard for them. Lisor is doing an excellent job at kiting, and, and, and Dolgang is also just making sure to avoid any damage onto him. Momentum riding in favor of Give It right now, just tunneling Yosuke down on that warrior, making it very difficult for them. And the, the full fear now on Oxygen. This could be huge trouble for Yosuke. A stun onto him as well. They don't have the Beast Giraffe ready, but the CC might just be enough. A beautiful reverse magic time onto Lee Sora. That's just about keeping Yosuke alive. But the Urban Shield Totem now comes down as well. And they are running on fumes, Dilly. Yeah, yeah. It just looks so, so behind for Mad Dog. I, I really think. That maybe maybe this uh, comp pick from Mad Dog was actually not wise. They seen the last series, but maybe the other Demon Hunter Warrior was a lot more experienced than Mad Dog seemed to be. Th this isn't really a main composition for them. It's actually almost like effectively triple alts for them. They they do not main these classes, so th this seems like what's putting them behind. But we can see Give It definitely making a strong showing here. But it's not over for them. Mad Dog still has the opportunity to win. They they know that the game has gone on long enough. Dampening is at 11%. Oxygen still has his mana tied with Gosling. He does have the Tree of Life coming in 30 seconds. They have a window where they can get so much offensive pressure on this rest of Druid. Yeah, the blood buff coming out between these two warriors, tunneling each other down, but Yosuke's getting really low. He has 20 seconds for that die by the sword, but I'm not sure if he's going to make it. The offensive cooldown's coming out from Give It right now. So much damage coming onto him. They can nearly finish him, but the darkness comes out from Fresh. Going to deny a lot of that pressure. Greatly timed darkness from him. Yeah, absolutely. Now we finally have this window where he has the Rallying Cry back. He has uh, the Die by the Sword, but things still could be super scary. They have the full Freezing Trap. They need to get the Reverse Magic onto it, but Fresh isn't there. He gets to it late. They have the Storm Ball on Lisora at the same time, so they really weren't able to do too much with that Reverse Magic. It almost could have been a waste for, uh, for Fresh to end up using it that late instead of waiting for another opportunity. And now this is where things get super scary for them. They should have another window where that Intimidating Shadow's up right now. They get the full Fear, and it just seems like Mad Dog needs to find this window to actually them down. They have the, tr the Tree of Life, so I think if they can kind of stay behind the pillar, line of sight, avoid damage like they're doing now, and just wait out that Tree of Life cooldown, that's going to be their win condition. Yeah, it could still go either way, but give it have all of their defensive cooldowns, really. They're actually going on to Gozing now, but he uses his Bark Skin, he gets stabbed on it, making a swap to Lee Sora, but he has his defensive cooldowns if needed. Gozing actually using that last bit of Incarnation to keep him alive. He has the Iron Bark and the Turtle if needs be. Yosuke taking a lot of pressure now. They really have nothing. They're going to have the Spirit Link very soon as well as that Urban Shield Totem. But like we said, the manners are just getting super low. 20% dampening now as well. And there's the Beach Giraffe from Lissora. Yosuke going to be in so much trouble. Six seconds left on that Spirit Link. He really needs to pop something. He, he misses the trap. Bow, and I think this might just be it. And down he goes. The Spirit Link not going to go off in time and give it surprisingly take this game 1-0. Career get their first win in the competition and it couldn't have come at a better time. Mad Dog filtering just a little bit at the end there. The Spirit Link just a second away from coming off. Um, survival Rep Paladin, it actually has a decent shot against other Hunter compositions. Historically, it usually is better in any Hunter Cleave Mirror. So based on that information, do you think that Give It kind of threw a curveball here at Mad Dog? Do you think they were expecting the KFC? Because we've seen Give It pre preparing a lot of compositions in the backstage. Right, they've been playing so much. So maybe Mad Dog just thought that, for, oh, for their wider range of cons, maybe the first game, it's better for us to pick Demon Hunter Warrior, and that could absolutely be it. Uh, what I think from watching that game is maybe in the, in the further series, they might not pick Demon Hunter Warrior unless it's something very specific and it's an unfortunate situation to be in that when you do have that blind pick if you actually kind of lose out on that mind game that'll put you really behind but on the flip side of course talking about team give it joe they looked very good in this game gorsing the first of the korean healers to actually swap away from that holy paladin here is much better for them shows much more confidence on their side
Yeah, and fresh on that retribution pattern. He was an absolute beast in those A and Z cups, so I'd love to see him crush people with that retribution pattern as well. But like I said, it he will have more off healings as well with that word of glory. Two stacks of that, giving them giant healing, which is going to be critical during their goes. And we are getting into this one right away on Asher mains full. And it looks like they're just trying to gun down Lee Sora, using that freedom right away to connect. Uh, Bistral Rath coming out as well from both hunters. Both teams going ham right away. Gorzen caught into the Hodge trap. Lee Sora could be in some trouble right now. They're going to be just pounding the pressure on him already. Yeah, and they actually did a great job at stopping that Sun Trap from coming out um, from Lee Sora because when they did have the Storm Ball on Oxygen, Yas actually got the Intimidation in the exact moment, and that actually kind of covered him, prevented him from being able to go for that Freezing Trap. And that's that's really key in Hunter matchups. If, if you're not getting your Sun Traps off cooldown, that's when you're going to slowly fall behind. And we already saw that happening right there. Now we have another full Hodge coming out from Fresh. They have a, a Freezing Trap available, but they actually stopped Yas from getting that Freezing Trap on time onto, onto Goss King, and that could actually, you know, swing the tides a little bit. There's a lot of pressure going on to Lee Sora. They do finally get that Freezing Trap, so great job from Yas. A lot of damage is going on to Lee Sora. He's trying to kite as much as he can. Yask has an insane amount of pressure at the moment, and we still do have the, the Word of Glory coming up from Fresh very soon, and that's what's going to really help out Oxygen on that healing output. Yeah, he's been using both already, but he's going to get one coming back very soon. Oxygen actually using his Trinket as to keep them alive. It looks like they make a swap onto the Warrior right now, just trying to say maybe swap between the Hots. Could be an effective strategy against the Restoration Druid teams whilst he's in that crowd control, but they're unable to follow up the trap after the Hammer of Justice. And once again, Gorzing is just looking like he's going to win this game on mana, maybe just kind of out-survive Mad Dog, and Mad Dog are going to be the ones that need to make something happen. Right, and I think that Warrior swap is a little bit better for them because it seems like Lisora is actually hiding that Repel in a little bit too hard. Their mobility isn't as strong. So hitting the other melee seems like it's going to be working out for them a lot oh. more. We already get that Trinket being forced out there. And we see that there's just so much pressure going back and forth. One thing I noticed Mad Dog is starting to fall behind with is they're not actually lining up their hot traps as much. And uh, Yas was still getting his traps, but a little bit delayed. And now he tries to get that trap in time. Still doesn't have it back up when they're going for that Hammer of Justice. And we can see that little bit of a miscommunication between them is making them have a little bit of the struggle in this series. We, we would normally want to see him getting that together. That's what you think of when you see Red Hunter or Warrior Hunter. You see a stun in a trap. Like we're seeing Give it doing right now, and Yasuke is getting pressure really hard. Has to use the exhilaration, still has the aspect of the turtle available to him, but he still is in a lot of trouble right now. I mean, he's really low. He's trying to kite, but he needs to not kite away from Oxygen as he has that Earthen Shield totem down, so he needs to stay in that and not avoid any free damage. Yeah, that Earthen totem is a lot of damage reduction, and earlier as well, Oxygen actually pre tremored a triple fit whilst they had no trinkets. So that was absolutely a huge play by Oxygen, but Fresh now dropping low. He used the World of Glories to keep him alive. There's another storm onto Oxygen. Can they get the trap? Doesn't look like they're able to right now. And a full trap under Gauls and Sadol Gang is going to be the one taking a lot of pressure here. The Intimidation stun finally lands. The Wings pressure from Fresh. No defensive cooldowns being used. They're Gauls just confident enough, spamming out those heals to keep him alive. And now a full trap on the Oxygen. A lot of pressure coming into Yosuke. He doesn't have that acceleration. He needs to kite. He's doing an excellent job with that. Maybe the turtle needs to be used, but looks very close to the close one to cool daily yeah i think he should be a little bit okay here i mean he is getting chunked he's getting lower but we have to remember the last go where things got super scary it was with that basilisk up but with this vortex down this means yasuke isn't going to be able to kite too much and they're going to have so much uptime onto him forcing the aspect of the turtle without even having cc oxygen was struggling so much now they go for the hammer of justice maybe get the full freezing trap trying to get pressure onto dolgan but this is just super super rough position for yas to be in they have that defensive fear onto him he's not able to do anything they're trying to get as much counter pressure as possible but it just doesn't look to be in mad dog's favor at the moment given is just dominating this game. They are dominating indeed, getting a lot of CC onto Oxygen, which is forcing Yosuke in these defensive positions. Doesn't have the aspect of the tower. The Earthen Shield Tome now comes down, but that is a huge cooldown. And then for quite some time, they're not going to have another huge cooldown apart from that Spirit Link, really. Oxygen trying to pre tremor once again. He gets put into a storm, but do they have the trap to follow it up? A Hammer of Justice at the same time onto Gauls, and they're pressuring Lee Sora with this Beast Giraffe right now, getting a lot of damage. He's looking for the trap as well, but Gauls in that travel form, Kai away, making it very difficult for Yosuke to connect his CC. Right, Yasuke's in this position where he needs to stay near the rest of Druid so that he can trap easily, especially when they don't have the stuns. But then it also makes it so that you have the Arms Warrior just attacking, and you're not able to cut him as much, and it's a rough position to be in. Whereas we have seen that actually they've been getting really good CC coming out from Gibbet, and Fresh hasn't actually been able to get the stakes in time that, uh, 
uh, like we actually saw now, he is able to get that sink, so it kind of delays that trap from happening, where you go for the sink, you immediately grounding, so the Hunter's not able to go for that trap in time. So that, that's something that's really strong with Brett Hunter in that matchup, but now we have that full trap coming out onto Gossing. Yask is swapping his Aspect of the Wild. He has the Basilisk up, trying to do as much damage as possible, but he has no Turtle, and Oxygen is locked out right now. They need to try to keep as much offensive pressure as possible. They're using all their offensive cooldowns, but nothing is happening. No one's health on Gibbet is moving. Oxygen is running lower and lower on mana. They're super desperate. They have to use that Spirit Link, and that's the last line of defense. Full of Fear comes out from Dolgang, and Yask isn't in that full Intimidation Zone. Has to use the Trinket, trying to run away. Fresh has the, the wings up, but he has no Word of Glories to save Yask. Yask is still at 50%, trying to kite as much as possible. Has to run back into that Earth in the Shield Children. We have a counter shot into a full Hodge. Go for the trap, but no one's health is moving. They're just staying at full HP this entire time. There's no counter pressure coming up from Mad Dog. They need to find their win condition. Yeah, and these Thor's just doing an excellent job kiting away from Fresh. It's making that win condition harder. They have to kill an Arms Warrior just sitting in that defensive stance by the looks of things. And it's been increasingly difficult for Mad Dog to slay them. And Dampening kicking in as well. Oxygen at nearly no mana. It's going to be very hard for him to keep this team alive. And a Stormbolt trap comes out. Yosuke doing an excellent job kiting before the trap even lands. But it looks like he's around half HP. They are connecting right now. As soon as that Beast Giraffe comes up, he's going to be in so much trouble. Blessing protection. Blessing of Protection is back up. They have it available. Yas or Fresh is going to use it immediately on Yas. So Yas is going to safely get this trap. But things are just so scary for them. I mean, they don't have any counter pressure, and that's what you need in any Hunter matchup. It seems they're actually swapping onto Gauzing, realizing that going for their CC is not doing too much for him. They force him behind the pillar. And I think maybe this is what they have to do to win this game. They go for the DR Sun on Yas. Maybe a little bit of a mistake. They're still trying to pressure him, though. He has the aspect of the turtle coming up in eight seconds, but Oxygen has no mana. Gauzing, he has he has his trinket, he has his iron bark available. 50% of his mana were in seven. 7% dampening. I feel like Mad Dog, it's almost it's almost over for them. It's give its game to lose. Oh, beautiful bash. He might die before the aspect of the toe. He just about sneaks that in. That bash from Gauzing is really doing a lot of work. And now the aspect of the toe has gone. Spirit Link down for 1 minute 20 seconds still. I don't know how they're going to win this one. Gauzing doing an extra job. He actually drank half mana as well. Whilst his team was under pressure, so excellent job. And now Hammer just in a full trap. Yosuke in so much trouble. He's just caught in such a difficult position position to CC Gauzing, but keep up the pressure. But like you say, the pressure is non-existent. Right, all right. I think they're having such a hard time getting any counter pressure out just because maybe Fresh isn't as mobile, so they can't really hit the other team's hunter and they're forced to hit this warrior. But this means that there's so much uptime. And Yasuke, he actually gets killed. They have him at 8% HP. He's not able to kite away. And Dolgain just getting that finish on him. And they execute it. Great play coming out of the Korean number one squad as they take a 2-0 lead in this series. Gentlemen. I cannot believe this. I'm so happy to see all three of the number one seeds from across the three regions coming here to the Asia Pacific Finals live in Sydney, Australia, and really bringing out their A game. They came here to play, and they're looking so good. But Dill, I got to ask you, what went wrong here? We talked about the Red Hunter even potentially having an advantage for Mad Dog, but it just did not play out that way at all. Give it just looking so good on this KFC. I think give it play that game very well. This is the right position to be in. Uh, but we've actually seen Demon Hunter, Warrior, Restor Shaman, super popular comp in North America. Very hard to fight as a, as a hunter in general. Um, and I think it's a smart pick. I actually like that Featherface also opting into playing uh, the, the Disarm that Boomkins have. Now it is dispellable by magic effects. But if he uses it on that warrior and they have CC, it's it's going to be very effective, I think. Right, it looks like they're getting a ton of pressure on Oxygen, abusing his adaptation choice, getting really low already, and having to use that Astral Shift as well as the Healing Tide and the Darkness. So many defensive cooldowns coming out from Mad Dog, give it having an excellent offensive strategy already, abusing that adaptation choice. Yeah, give it actually, they're kind of doing all the things in that KSD matchup that we were kind of thinking that uh, Chicken Jack and Select were potentially not doing as well. And I think that they've actually played their KFC absolutely beautifully. So, I mean, with both these teams just having such strong showings, I, I'm really impressed by the first seed of every single region here. Um, Featherfeet also is, is trying to get as much pressure as he can right now. He is popping that Incarnation, but really they're not they're not getting that pressure on Ghost King's mana that they want to. They get that full uh, trap onto Oxygen, but Fresh is doing a great job. Make sure to dash over to Oxygen. He was there already. He does reverse magic the trap, but things are just... Um, Things look so scary with that first initial swap on the Oxygen trying to punish that adaptation. Right, exactly. And having that reverse magic adaptation is very good to deal with the freezing traps on him. They can kind of just, you know, use one every single trap, but at the same time, like we saw early in this 
in this game that as soon as that adaptation is gone, he won't be able to trink it out of storm bots and he could have a kill opportunity on him right away. And there is that adaptation procking on that trap. They're going for Dolgogon as well. They're getting quite a bit of pressure under him. Fresh on that Demon Hunter is going to do quite a bit of magic damage as well as Feather Feet. But a nice triple fear coming out onto Oxygen. They put him, they're just tunneling down Feather Feet really making him forced into going to bear form and it actually looks like maybe mad dog could have the mana advantage with this matchup due to their high pressure as well Dilly. right also i believe boom can still can give innervate to their healers mm -hmm. and um on top of that I, I think just the spread pressure is really nice and one thing i like about the demon hunter boomkin synergy in general is actually that uh the demon hunters give a five percent magical uh damage increase so with the boomkin that's really nice especially because especially because they rely so much more on that sustained damage and once the game kind of gets in that dampening window the burst damage you can get from them is so high and especially demon hunters with that demonic have non-stop consistent damage synergizing very well with boomkins to make this really tanky comp with high control and high spread pressure yeah and that high burst from the incarnation and the annihilation can be very hard to deal with and a triple stun coming out on to give it as well and i actually do like this adaptation and reverse magic choice because they are going to be able to deal with all of those traps which could make it very hard for give it to win because that's what they relied on ultimately in their two previous wins was having storm bolts into traps onto oxygen and just slaying one of the dps at the same time yeah feather v also gets an excellent knee big burst windows happening outside of when the kfc goes but you have to think the demon hunter uh boomkin it's more of a late game composition they kind of wait for damn to get a little bit high they try to run out the other uh, healer's mana and then that's the moment where they go as offensive as possible their shaman might start going in there for purges if they can try to conserve that mana and that's where the pressure just becomes too much for teams to deal with once they have a little bit of that healing reduction now and now we see a beautiful clone coming out from feather feet onto god's king still trying to keep up that decent pressure onto dolgang who seems to be their primary kill target and i i kind of agree with that i'd like to maybe see them trying to uh, do a little bit more of that Boomkin spread pressure um, on the BM Hunter's pet because it is something that they're actually excellent at. So I think maybe the Demon Hunter Boomkin, if they decide to swap and kill the pet a little bit more while st still keeping that damage onto Dolgang, they can kind of make it so they can move into damping a little bit better. Right, exactly like you say. And Fresh just trinking it out of his stun right away there. And Gorsen going to look for to go for a drink, but Feather Feet maybe going to stop him. These drinks will matter a lot. So stopping them is very important right now because they are very equal on mana and a bash onto Feather Feet. Fresh actually dropping low. He gets kicked under Oxygen. He needs to be very careful. He has that death from above if needed, but he's going to drop the darkness instead. Oxygen getting his adaptation proc onto that trinket, uh, onto that trap even as well. And it looks like Give It is still doing very well against his composition, even though Feather Feet is very tanky against their pressure. Right, and they're actually forcing this position where he goes for these stealth rings, and then we have Feather Feet having to actually run out there in bear form so that he can swipe him out of the stealth. I mean, it, it is smart from Feather Feet to actually know where he's located when he's going for that stealth drink, so that, that's great awareness on his part, but we could just see that the amount of pressure coming out is really huge maybe it's the talent choices from feather feet maybe we need to see him playing more of that starfall spec which we actually don't see him doing we don't see the constant aoe pressure and i think maybe that could be a little bit better as far as also cutting the pass but now we see that damage coming out they have that beam lockout onto god's king and they also have the reverse magic at the same time so a lot of damage coming out there we have that in cap uh Dull king does get himself topped off but we're actually seeing that iron bark being forced so things are starting to look scarier and scarier especially now that we have incarnation coming back up really soon dampening should be starting in just a moment and that's when things again are going to start to favor the demon hunter warrior if the kfc is not able to close out the game and now they have the dr intimidation sent onto oxygen getting him very low right before that uh, adaptation comes back up but now things should be okay for him i love these swaps onto oxygen from give it they're just timing these swaps with the storm bolt not proccing the adaptation and then doing a ton of pressure during those windows whilst it doesn't have any damage reduction and it's making it a lot difficult for oxygen to keep up with his mana gozing doing an excellent job getting those drinks as well it looks like he'll be fine and now the beast sheriff coming out from Lee Sora. Fresh going to be in some trouble with the storm bolt onto oxygen into a full trap, but the adaptation procs once again. But he was so ready for that fear. Lee Sora in so much trouble. He had to use that aspect of the turtle, overlapped with the rallying cry, and Mad Dog now a, ta a turn in the tables. Right. I think they were actually waiting for that in that win condition. They were mostly hitting the warrior for most of the game. They didn't pressure the hunter that much. But now once they realized that we're in dampening and they actually had no trigger from Lee Sora, they decided let's pop the incarnation. Let's do as much damage onto him as possible. And we also have the unused meta is coming up from fresh very soon that's when the pressure is going to get higher and higher until these sora now they have the iron bark available they have the trinket but now there still is that window where no aspect of turtle is available for Lee sora and they still have that consistent pressure onto dolgang and since they force him to use a rallying cry i mean that's also a defensive from him out of the way and this is where things get super scary seven percent dampening at this moment and it looks like mad dog is kind of stabilized they're in this moment where things are looking good for them they have the add up coming up for the next trap since fresh just reversed that last one there they have spirit link available as long as they can stay good on mana they get that beam Ooh, misses the lockout though 
so great, great juking coming out there from Gosking. That was a great fake on that regrowth as well to avoid the solar beam lockout. Gonna keep up his team and have that iron bug ready, which he just uses now to counter that annihilation from Fresh. Once again, the trap proccing that adaptation against Oxygen, so they could be looking for an opportunity very soon. A nice pummel over on him as well, pressuring Featherfeet. He uses the thorns to try and mitigate some damage back, just counter pressure Dole Gang from just slaying him, really. Right, right, and I'm actually surprised they didn't get that much damage with that with that thorns. They actually kind of went through it. They don't have a purge, but they still stayed on there trying to get that damage. They used a fellow Eruption on the God's King, trying to get some CC. They go for the Warrior Fear, getting pressure onto Featherfeet. He does have the Renewal available to himself, and very soon he should have that Incarnation available, which will help him get out a little bit of that damage. They go for the Intimidation Stun on them. They have the full trap. Fresh needs to get there for the Reverse Magic. Does get there in time, but remember, anytime he also Reverse Magics those traps, they actually take up the Moonkin Dots, and even if they're here, easy to reapply. It still helps you out a little bit to get that dispel on it. Right, it does, yeah, having that reverse magic is very key and very nice against this composition and we are going to be looking for that incarnation coming up in 45 seconds will be key and will be the biggest chance for mad dog to win but they have to survive for it and it's 16 percent dampening oxygen dropping on mana the beam i think it actually lands this time on the goal thing during the innovate so well played there by featherfee landing that beam but not really getting any pressure out dogong and lisa are just completely topped off and this is looking like trouble for mad dog and give it could just take this if they're unable to win in the next incarn. Right, there is no darkness available from Fresh, and that's a huge defensive cooldown that they decided to put pressure on the Spirit Link. They do have the Spirit Link, but we're at this moment where Oxygen doesn't really have that much mana, so he could get in this window where, yeah, he has Spirit Link available, but he can't really use it on his team. And this is where you see Shamans maybe sometimes trying to throw it out, but it really isn't going to do too much. I, I think maybe he could potentially try to go for a drink, but we've seen how much consistent pressure there is. They're forcing Fresh to actually have to use his Gladiator's Medallion once he got caught in that full Intimidate. Another beautiful Spider Sting going out the Featherfeet. He sounds and Fresh is the one who's under pressure. God's game oh. at this time. He goes for the drink and they kill him. They actually get the kill under Fresh. He had he had his blur available. He, he ended up not using it. He had the rain from up above. And, and I don't know if that was just a mistake from Fresh, but I, I mean, they, they had that window to kind of be okay. They actually used the Spirit Link, but Fresh just wasn't in it. It was down, he was alive, but he just wasn't in it. And that was a uh, huge mistake. And unfortunate for them, it is gonna cost them this series. They go 3-0 down to Give It and are now in the lower bracket. Yep, that was an unfortunate finish for Mad Dog, but you gotta give credit to Give It, who really did bring it in this series. 3-0 victory for the career number one in that one. And I mean, at the end of the game, Gorsi came down for a drink. This team just won the game for him. He didn't mind that at all, did he, Dill? Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I was going to mention. It was like, he he actually knew at that moment, like, it was still good for him to go for it. Like, he didn't need mm -hmm. to be in there. So even if they don't kill, even if they get the link off, that that was still a perfect choice. So, I mean, Gibbet was prepared for everything to happen. I mean, that, that's the funniest thing, though. If you actually see your your teammate get killed while the other healer is going for a drink, <laughs> like, that's when you're just like, wow. You're so far ahead in the game at yeah. that point. I mean, I, I was actually going to, I wanted to, I was talking, like, thinking about, like, post-match, like, what would I want to talk about? And I was going to say that Gossing, he played it really defensive. And one of the things we've seen from these Rusted Druids in Korea is they're favoring this overgrowth talent, which is basically like another healing utility tool you can use over the cyclone. And I was going to say in a slower paced match like this, it maybe he should be playing a little bit more aggressive, helping his team out with the crowd control, but they don't need it. They're just winning the game on mana. They're, play they're willing to play the pressure game and the slower game, and either way seems to work for them, Joe. Right, it's working out uh, perfectly for them, as we saw a 3-0, and it looking very comfortable for them. And like I said, having that overgrowth, every time he was in CC, his team were topped, so I think it was <laughs> an ex an excellent choice, really. Yeah, it did work to perfection and didn't really need those Cyclones, you know. Kind of reminds me of the WAD uh, gameplay from Turbos, where the rest of the is just don't really need to use that Cyclone ability. And it seems the same case with the KFC. Yeah, and I, I mean, I just, I cannot wait for this upper bracket. I got to say, like, you got number one team from Taiwan, number one team from Australia, now number one team from Korea. So we'll see some of those final moments. And this was actually one of the most interesting moments in the match yeah. for me. This is the very opener. Give it no their win condition still. They they saw the adaptation, immediately leaped in, intimidating shouts, swapped over onto auction. There's so many times where you can see that this Korean team is just playing to the maximum potential of their composition. Right, and I think what we had heard is Lee Story, he doesn't really main the Beastmaster Hunter, but they kind of had that kind of preparation to, to play that together, and we could see that them as a team, they're very well coordinated. They're making these really smart decisions, and honestly, I think if it played that game beautifully, it, it, it was excellent KFC play. I think that 
it, everything they did was pretty much well executed. Um, and I actually think the the decision we were talking about earlier with not going for Cyclone, <laughs> it, it, it makes sense in that kind of matchup. You don't, you're not really going to be able to get clones as KFC. I feel like you don't have the support like Rogue Mage as a rest of Jordan, and you have to push in versus his melee cleave, which is, I feel like it only gives you a pretty entertaining series. There's been back and forth in all three of them. Unitas coming up next will be the number two seed from Australia, New Zealand, the former champions of APAC going up against ZFA, which are the second team from Taiwan. So this is going to be another very interesting series. And I mean, let's say whichever team wins this, 